In this video, we're going to show you how to create a camera using Onshape. Um, you've got this document in your Google Classroom. Uh, you might have a printout of it, and it will guide you through all the different stages. So it's www.onshape.com. Uh, you can also find it from the CBSC shortcuts. Go to sign in. You've got all of your username and passwords. Your username should be the same that you log in with at school at carshaltonboys.org. And then your password, which again you should have remembered written down so that you can quickly log in to one shape every time. Um, if you haven't done it, you should always make sure that your workspace units are set to millimeters. So you go my account, preferences units and just check that there are millimeters which mine are to go back to the home page hit the on shape button and these are all my documents but what we want to check is when we start a new file by going create and document we're going to call it camera c-a-m-e-r-a -E okay and then when the file gets created just to make sure we need to hit on the three little lines for the document menu and just check that our workspace units are still millimeters they should be but just worth checking right so we're ready to begin on this worksheet you've got a reminder of some of the handy viewing tools of how to control the views uh, probably the most useful one is the actual cube there on the right clicking on the top the right or the corners uh, you can also, if you need to look at a particular surface, you can right click to view normal to sketch plane, which is quite useful. And if you need to view it back into 3D, you've got the little cube there where you can view it in isometric or something like that to, to change the view so you can see it in 3D. Now, if you're following this sheet, you don't need to worry about the first example. All right, that's just a little practice cube. Um, but we're going to go straight into task one, which is to make a cuboid 150 long, 50 wide. And 50 high and all of your methods all the steps that I'm going to go through in the video are here on the sheet the two tools that you're going to use for this section are corner rectangle and extrude so let's get started first of all you click on the top top work plane because that's where we're going to be working from the top up now you can click the top work plane here or over on the left hand side of the page where it says features I'd rather click on it there and when you click it it goes orange and you're ready to tell the computer you want to sketch on that work plane. So hit sketch and now you've got all your drawing tools available to you at the top. For this one we're going to use a corner rectangle. If you click on the arrow you've got corner rectangle or center and point. We want the corner one. And if you click just in the center and then pull out a rectangle, it doesn't matter how big it is because we're going to size it up now. So you click to start and then click to finish. And then the next step is to go over to the length and just hover your mouse over the length and type in 150 enter. So we've set that at 150 millimeters. Then without clicking go over to the width, hover over it and type in 50 enter. And now we've set that at 50 and 150. If you do accidentally click uh, OK on your sketch, um, it's absolutely fine. You can always go back in and change that by going to sketch one and right click and edit now if we for example didn't put any measurements on there we can always add them by going to the dimension tool at the top click on the side that you want to put a dimension on drag out to where you want to leave your dimension and then you can change it oh, i don't want it 100 i actually want mine to be at 50 so double click there we go and then we'll put another one on here and that one's fine so we've got a length of 150 width of 50 when the rectangle is drawn we can say ok to that sketch now the final step for this task is to extrude it up by 100 millimeters so you can either click it now or you can click it after I prefer to click it now to say this is the shape that we're going to extrude into 3d so we've selected it now we go to extrude and by default it's gone to extrude it by 25 millimeters we want that to be 100 so type in 100 and enter 
and you can see it's added some extra height to that. Um, when you get a bit quicker, you can just drag the handle and see, but we want a specific height of 100. Um, a few other things that we need to check. We need to make sure that we're creating a solid and not a surface. Uh, if it's a surface, it won't, you won't see very much. Um, and it sort of does it section by section, which isn't much use to us. What we want is a solid. So set it to solid. Make sure you can see it as a solid object. Uh, it's a new shape because we haven't made anything else. And all the rest of those settings are fine. So we can click OK to that. So that's task one complete. Now we'll move on to the second task, which is to add a 60 diameter circle extruded up to 40 millimeters to create a cylinder. First of all, we have created the cuboid. So then we need to select the surface that we're going to put the lens or the cylinder on, which is the front, the big surface of the front. So we click on that to make it go orange. Next step, hit sketch. Now at this stage, we're ready to start drawing our circle, um, but it's quite a good idea to flatten it out so that we can see what we're sketching nice and neatly. Now you can either hit the front button there to flatten it out, or uh, a good tip is to right click somewhere on the page and go view normal to sketch plane. And that will do the same, same sort of thing. Now, we're ready to draw the circle, so we need to select a center point circle and just start somewhere over on the on the side and drag out a circle. Same as before, once you've created it, don't cl click again, just hover and type in 60 for the diameter. So we've got the right size circle, but it's not positioned in the right place. So we're going to need to use the dimension tool again. And for that, to make sure it's evenly spaced, we click on the center of the circle and then click on the outside of the rectangle. And that's saying that a measurement between the center of the circle and the outside to make it perfectly spaced would be 50 because it was 50 uh, 100 millimeters high and we could do the same again by clicking the center and the outside pull that down and click it to let go and if we set that also at 50 then it's also this even spaced over there it doesn't matter where it goes as long as it looks about right uh, if you don't have measurements on it, what you could do, as long as you're not in dimension or circle mode, is you can click the center of your circle and drag drag to reposition it. All right, but I'd like to make sure it's nice and accurately positioned, so I'm going to keep mine at 50 from the side and 50 from the top by using the dimension tool. So that sketch is ready to go. We can click OK. Now the final part here is to extrude it into 3D. Now if we extrude it into 3D, because we're looking flat at it, we won't be able to see. So a good thing to put it into 3D now is to go to the little cube icon, set it to isometric, so we can now see our object in 3D. So what we do now is, again, we can click it after or click it now. I like to click it now, is select the circle, and then tell it to extrude. Now, by default, it's extruding that as a surface. So I'm going to make sure that's set to solid, and it looks like I need to go back and reselect that circle. Just the circle, not the whole surface. There we go. So and now it's knowing to extrude that circle, and it's going to add it to the previous shape that we've created. And instead of extruding to 25, this time we want to extrude it to 40. Type in 40 and enter. And there we go. So that's task two complete. Now let's have a look at task three. For this one, we're going to use two new tools, which are going to be the fillet and the chamfer. And we, it doesn't matter how you use these really, we just want to create some, some interesting features to our camera. So I'm going to select this fillet and once we've got that, we can select an edge. Now you can either select a whole surface like that, or you can select an edge. I'm going to do an edge first. So you click on it, and you can see it's created a fillet, a, round, a rounded edge. I'm going to increase that from 5 up to 20. And you can see that's given us a slightly, slightly bigger radius. Uh, and we can say OK. 
And you can either do them one at a time, or if you want other other edges rounded at the same the same sort of size, then you can add it to that one. I'm going to make mine a different size, so I'm going to go to fill it again. The entities that I'm going to fill it are going to be this edge this time. I might increase this up to 40 to make it even bigger. Okay, and you can go around and you can add fillets of whatever whatever shape you think is suitable. I'm going to select this whole back surface and a couple of the underside ones as well. And then click OK. And you can also have a go at doing chamfers, which is the one next to it. Um, and instead of making a round, that will create a sort of diagonal cut like that. And I'm going to leave that at five. Okay, so that's task three done. Again, you can experiment with that however you like, whatever you think looks good. Then on to task four, where we're going to add the brand name for our camera. So let's put it into isometric so we can see what we're doing. There we go. Now for this one, we're going to use a couple of new tools. Well, we're going to use the text tool. So first of all, select where you want your text to go. So I'm going to put one at the front. So we click that, so it goes orange. Then hit sketch again. And again, remember you might want to position it so you're looking at the front, or right click, view normal to sketch plane, so you can see what you're writing. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and then create some text by going to the text tool. Now it's got a dot in the bottom left hand corner which means that when you click to start it it starts from the bottom left and when you pull it up that's how you set your text. If you do it the other way around your text might be back to front and upside down. So I'm going to type in my text for my camera. You could use a brand name like Nikon or Olympus or use your own name. It's entirely up to you. You've got a few different fonts to choose from, not many, um, but you can have a look at those and see which ones you prefer the look of, and if you want it in bold. And there's some other settings which you can use to make it italic or flip, and so on. And then we say OK. Now at this point, it looks a little bit big, and it's clashing with my lens. So what we'll have to do is use the dimension tool to set how either how tall it is or how wide it is. It doesn't really matter which one you go for. If you click and drag, again it's saying that from one end to the other is 73 millimeters. So if we just reduce that to something smaller like 50, then that'll make our text smaller. Now we don't we can use the dimension tool to set how far the text is away from the edge, or if you want to do it freestyle, you can deselect dimension click on the corner at the bottom left and then drag it into position where you want it to be. So I'm happy with that. Next thing, we'll OK that sketch, put it back into isometric so we can see it. And then we are going to extrude that. So you can click on your extrude button. So the first thing, again, we don't want it to be solid. We want it to add instead of make a new one. and the faces that we're going to use to extrude are going to be our text, but you might need to you can either click on sketch 3 because that's the thing that you've just created, or you can go and click on your text like that, and you can see it's extruding that text and pulling it out into 3D. Now so far everything that we've extruded has been adding material, but I think for this one we're going to try and remove the material, and by default it will push it back in, but we don't want it to go in by very much. So we'll have the depth at two millimeters. So it cuts in by two millimeters like that. Again, if you want to, you can drag this hand handle manually to be able to move it, but two millimeters is just about right. And then, okay. So there's our text removed rather than added. Um, and then we're on to task five. So task five is really just to add some new features using those techniques that you've learned. So it may be adding a button to the top, a viewfinder or some extra lenses. And the same principles apply. You select the surface, make it go orange, tell it that you want to sketch on it. You may want to view normal to sketch plane by right clicking so you can see what you're doing. 
you can then draw your shape you can dimension it to position where you want it to to be or you can come off dimensions and you can move it manually like that then when you've drawn your sh sketch you can so that, okay your sketch you can extrude click on the sketch that you just created now mine's a little bit dodgy here because it's it's going to be clashing with my uh, fillet what I might have to do here is to make it symmetrical so it goes up and down at the same time make that 10 and click OK and we can add something to the back maybe a viewfinder select sketch view normal to sketch plane create a rectangle for a viewfinder there again you might want to size it up nicely and then OK and then we can extrude that this time we want it to remove and you might need to check how much you're removing it by I want mine to go all the way through so you need to set instead of blind to go through all so it cuts all the way through just make sure it doesn't clash with my lens if it does I might need to resize it or move it around but that looks okay and then we can just carry on adding or removing features so if we do lenses for example select the face sketch draw a circle there's some nice little tools that you can use in here with contours and projecting but I'm going to do it this way by drawing a circle saying OK then going to extrude click on my circle set that to 20 and then I've added an extra bit of lens we can do the same again select sketch maybe draw another circle you might want to use the center as a reference point and for this one I'm going to extrude it that circle there but I'll have it removing going back in like that and you can build it up and build it up and add all sorts of bits you can add some more text in add some more buttons and just keep on going until you're happy